Uh, Shane Black is involved in the movie and uh, it's kind of a weird choice as an actor because he's a fantastic writer. So there are rumors around that says that he was probably helping with the script. So I wonder whether you remember being a specific choice to bring. No, that was exactly what it was about. Um, uh, I tried, he had just written Lethal Weapon for Joel Silver and I loved the screenplay. And I tried to get him to rewrite this screenplay, uh, and he wouldn't do it. So what I did do is, is I hired him as an actor, <laughs> <laughs> just to have him around. Genius. Just come up with ideas, and he came up with all, all that. He came up with his own character, with his own dialogue, all those hideous, stupid jokes, <laughs> <laughs> all that stuff is wonderful. Um, and yes, that was exactly why he was. He was there uh, because he was smart and interesting and fun, and we figured we'd get ideas out of him. Next question. Uh, let's go for the gentleman in the front. Hi, John. Nice to meet you. Um, just to say, one of the classic films in the, the action, really good film, Predator. Um, so let's, let's get to the chopper quickly. And uh, I want to say to you quickly, um, it's, it's not related, it's a different film related to it. The Hunt of October, Sean Connery. How, do you, how is it like working with him? And also, how can you compare him to the other leading actors you work with, including Arnold? Oh, I don't know. Every, every actor is different. Um, part of a director's job is figure out what they act, the actor is like and, and figure out how to serve them. Um, Sean used to scare people because he was a tough old bastard. <laughs> but he, but he, he was frankly just like my family. <laughs> so I had no difficulty with it. Um, and he was just like, my grandfather was just about as scary. Um, so, I don't know. The first few days he worked, everybody was, was afraid of him um, and worried and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I think the second night, uh, at the end of the second day of shooting, on his way home, um, as he went, walked toward his car, he said, Good night, boy. And I knew I was in by then. You know, that in me, his parlance and in the parlance of my family, too. Um, you know, that was an endearment. Um, and um, and we always did fine. Uh, Arnold, as I said, um, Arnold loves to do physical things. Just, um, and loves to compete. And I don't know, Arnold, Arnold is a sponge for information. He is, he is really an extraordinary man. Genuinely an extraordinary man um, in any field. Um, um, I, I think he should be running for president in the States right now to save our asses from these crazy people. Uh, <laughs> that's not funny. Uh, I'm sorry. We're living in 1932, guys. The major nation in our culture is in the middle of a fascist revolution, and that is not just crying wolf, that's what's happening. And you people, the rest of the whole fucking world, should be terrified. They will lead us into a war with China inevitably. I'll be dead already, but the awful lot of you are going to live through it, and you should worry about it like fucking crazy. All right, next question. <laughs> Uh, can we go for... Oh, oh boy, I just shut the whole audience up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want some more politics? Great, okay. <laughs> and then we can go home right now. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering about the location challenges uh, while shooting the movie and if you stumbled upon any locations that you saw on the on in the jungle you were like okay we're shooting here and it wasn't planned. 
Well, no, you don't say, you just don't do that. You know, we're shooting here and it's not planned. Um, no, you make them plan it. Uh, but you, 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 you know, it's sort of like being a military officer. You, you, you got logistics to deal with. And it's just, you have a better deal with it. Um, in Mexico, the way we would work at a place is, um, you know, once we decided, okay, we're going to shoot this day at this place, the first thing we did is we had a squad of local farmers, aliens, um, and they would go in and get the, the poisonous snakes out. For real, I'm not kidding. Um, um, and then we would also, we found that, uh, you know, a path in the jungle, if you take a movie company, they would all go right to the path. And then you have the pirate jump and box and everything. So if you're going to work in a location, the place where you're going to shoot, you have to keep everything out of. So that means you have to build other paths leading into it. You have to engineer all that stuff and plan it beforehand. Um, um, other times, you know, you build machinery that goes like when I did uh, 13th Warrior, it was all about but something I wanted to do a lot was, you know, get a camera to chase a horse, stay with a horse. So I built machines. Um, I built a three-wheel motorcycle. Three wheels in line. Um, two of them were powered in the back and they had great big tractor tires on it. But, it would, you know, you got a strong motorcycle rider who could go in between trees and he would carry a man with a camera. Um, you know, you build the machines that go with the, that go with where you're going to work. Um, I've always wanted to go, I've always wanted to do movies in different places, and, and I've always wanted, I don't know, again, this boys' adventure stuff, I, a lot of the things I've done have been outside, essentially. You know, it just feels, I like it better than doing movies about things in an office. Um, um, and so I try to go to different places. Um, and each place, there would be different um, uh, challenges, but that's just, like I said, it's engineering. You, know, you figure out how to make this work. How are you going to get 100 people to get a movie out of this particular area in a certain number of production days? Does that answer your question? Yeah, great. Uh, fabulous, thank you. The importance of a, a good recce, obviously. Uh, we have a, a lady here who has a mask on. Can we? Uh, it's been, well, it's the 35th anniversary of Predator, and the film has advanced tremendously with technology within the last 35 years. Is there a certain scene in this film you would have loved to uh, have done with the technology we have today? <laughs> no, um, you know, the cameras are lighter. Um, yeah, sure, somebody would probably say, why don't we all do it on a stage with an LED screen behind? There's a difference. There's just a difference. Um, somebody actually, I think they're English, have just they did some research about the difference between a movie seen by a whole group of people in a theater and a movie seen by somebody on a big screen, you know, by themselves. Um, and there's an enormous amount of pheromones and sounds and all sorts of things and experience, literally. The human beings in a large group of human beings experiencing the same thing is completely different. And um, you know, actually, I think it was Aristotle who talked about that and talked about uh, the agora and the, and the exchange of information and that sort of stuff. So it's like the more things they change, the more they stay the same. I wouldn't, I wouldn't shoot much of Predator in a particularly different way. Technology is just technology. Mm -hmm. That's all. Um, um, on 
unfortunately, there, there's this thing that happens that uh, deceives people when a new technology comes along. Um, and it usually, if it's film, it drives things backwards for a few years. Like the first few years of talking movies were nowhere near as good as the last few years of silent movies. movies. Because they were, you know, they thought the sound was doing everything for them. Um, you know, and there are a lot of people who in recent years thought we could make the whole movie in a computer uh, and it would be fantastic. And some of them are, are fine movies, but um, um, all of them are just tools. And if you and they're wonderful or not, whatever. But tools are not content. Okay, it's and and as long as you don't get confused about that, uh, the things are fine. Good answer. I'd like to go to the back, please. Can we go to that side? There's a gentleman with his hand up. Sorry guys, I can barely see you with that though, but uh... <laughs> Hi, um, I just wanted to know whether you were happy with it when you finished it and how many times you've watched it since and do you pick out all of the things that went wrong or do you give yourself a break? Um, I, yeah, I usually never look at my own movies for, I guess I can't, for years afterwards because all I see is just stuff I fucked up. Um, <laughs> and you know, I'm still beating myself up over if I just do this. Da, 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 da. Uh, and then there's eventually the forgettable, which is about a 20 year old movie. I don't know. I've, I have seen this since it came out, but not, not recently. Uh, what did I do? I have seen. I saw Die Hard for the first time last week first time in years and years. Um, and I saw Thirteenth Warrior for the first time in maybe 20 years. Um, and was happy. Um, uh, Die Hard had, had a lot of ambition. And I see, you could sense it. It's kind of, um, Die Hard part has a sense of courage in it. Uh, it's mostly young men, but it was a group of young men who were really swinging for the fences. And I like that. It shows up. Um, 13th Warrior, my reaction was uh, somewhere about halfway through, two thirds of the way through, I said, Wow, what a grand adventure. Um, and that, that that basic sense of, you know, okay, we're going to take an urban guy from a completely different culture, and you're going to go out on one of the primordial battles of history. Hot. <coughs> and I was happy that I had achieved at least some of that feeling um, that was in there. I can't tell you about this one necessarily. Um, I remember the last time I saw this. But, uh, um, I'm babbling, sorry, I'm going in circles. <laughs> no problem. Uh, there is somebody with a hand up with a white t-shirt right at the back, last row. Sorry to make you run up the stairs. Who has a burning question, I can tell from here. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Mr. McTiernan, for um, for visiting the festival. It's, it's been fantastic. Can I just ask, um, when you made this, did you have any concept about the Predator IP becoming a franchise, and have you at any point been asked to actually return to it? Thank you. Um, no. Um, this was before the studios were, were entirely controlled. Overseers of the money. Um, so it was before, you know, they would turn out five and six of the same movie over and over. Um, um, so we hadn't really, you know, 
know, somebody wanted to make another one, fine. Uh, 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 but we, no, we haven't planned on it. There's been um, some full so whatever. Next question. Uh, we have a gentleman right in the middle here, <laughs> very close to you. Thank you. First of all, can I say it's a great honor and it's a fantastic movie, not just this, but all of your movies. Uh, I just wanted to ask a question about the great amount of non-verbal communication that's in the movie between the various uh, members of the team, uh, as well as setting up the scene. Is that something that you plan? Because uh, some of those hand signals have been used in all sorts of movies, including Lord of the Rings. So uh, I just wanted to ask you that question. Oh, of course. Um, I tried to, I wanted this before, you know, it's been used many times after, but uh, they hadn't been used then, and I wanted to. I wanted to have them all have little tiny things where they could whisper to each other, but I was just staring at what I mean. Um, and I didn't have the credibility at the time to push it. Um, Uh, but uh, no, of course, I mean, if you're making a movie, you know, about a group of guys, there should be a lot of communication that's, um, that's nonverbal. Um, the more the better. Um, uh, and we got, we did have a military advisor who, what I had the guy do is, is, put all the actors in uniform and take them out on hikes. We did it for a week every day. Um, I got dirty, I got sweaty, miserable, hated it, and blah, 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 blah. But by the end of that, they knew each other. Um, it was an awful lot of movies, you have this problem of all these actors, you, you know, they're supposed to be a, a crew that knows each other, and they don't know each other. And they don't react as if they know each other. Um, so one of the things I was trying to do was give these give these guys an experience of each other, whether they were friends or hostile or whatever, but just build the webs of exchange in between the actors, between the men, so that by the time I'm, we're gonna shoot, they have a backlog of experience and it's in their eyes, it's in everything about how they behave toward each other. Um, and it showed up in, you know, it showed up in nice, fun things. In this, like, uh, I don't know, Richard Chavez and, what's his name? Jesse the Governor. Um, and they're shooting at something, and uh, I don't know, Jesse said he ain't got time to bleed, all this stuff. Um, that was just, you know, because they got to know each other. Fabulous. I don't know if that's an answer. <laughs> We only have time for about three or four more questions, maybe less. Uh, let's go, there's uh, a gentleman just there uh, with, he's got kind of strawberry, strawberry blonde hair, what I see? I can just about see you. <laughs> okay, white hair, there you go. <laughs> Hi there, yeah, um, so my question is the uh, sound design of the, of the poetry itself, the, um, the noise it makes, um, I love that uh, as a child, um, watching that, because um, it builds his character. And was there any inspiration of why it, it had that noise as you moved through the trees? Was there any, uh, from, was there any what of it? Like an inspiration? It, um, oh, no, it was something that the sound folks came up with. They created, okay. they created a bunch of noises that would go with the predator and you know, when we mixed it, we mixed and matched and tried to think th things that seemed to feel right. That's all. Um, and, and, you know, and they were brilliant to come up with it. I hadn't thought about, oh wait, there should be a particular noise that he makes. Uh, oh, well, it was a grand job because, I mean, lots of those elements, the, um, you know, the night vision and the, um, the way he mimics the, the, um, the voices of the, um, Mm -hmm. the well, that was put in after. Um, the mimic 
mimicking, I don't think was part of the script, but mimicking came out of, because there was a problem with the, the suit, the original monster suit was just terrible, um, and so it delayed our shooting, and in the process, uh, Arnold's contract ran out, and he was generous, and he gave us extra days, and this and that, but finally he said, no, I gotta go home, my, my wife wants me home tomorrow night, right after. So he said, I'll give you two more days. Um, and we still had quite a bit of script to shoot. Um, and Joel Silver got on the you know, phone with the studio, and there was a giant crisis, and oh, we're not going to sue him, and no, blah, 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 blah. all this nonsense. And I just finally went to Joel and said, 